Hello, and welcome to this episode of TLI Shop Talks. I'm Sue Elliott, Director of the Tanglewood Learning Institute. We're filming at the Lindy Center for Music and Learning today. With me, a very special guest, conductor Anna Rakitina. Anna, thanks so much for joining me here today. Always a pleasure, thank you. You're welcome. What's it like to be making your debut at Tanglewood? Well, I am, I'm absolutely excited about the upcoming week, and I can't wait to start rehearsing. And um, as you probably know, my debut was supposed to, to, to be last year and was unfortunately, as many others, canceled. But uh, I'm happy that we finally together again. <laughs> and so far, I uh, had a lot of time assisting to this orchestra. And now we know each other much better than in the beginning. And so their support and smiles, uh, they give me so many inspiration. Mm -hmm. And they encourage me very, very, very much. Mm -hmm. So this is your first appearance at Tanglewood, but you actually conducted the Boston Symphony Orchestra in the past season at Symphony Hall in a recorded concert. What was yeah, that like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, um, that was a little bit more challenging because we had a, a different uh, staging for, for those times. Uh, but it worked great, and because of they are so very professional people, and uh, they are able to to give their best in any situation. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was a great experience for me. Mm -hmm. And now I I hope it will be a little bit more relaxing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know the players are enjoying very much not having to sit so far apart these days. Yeah, on exactly. Stage. It, yeah. It, yeah, it helps, and this is how orchestra works better actually. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. So in addition to your work with the Boston Symphony Orchestra, at, at a point previous to now in your career, you actually founded your own chamber orchestra. I'm curious how the work of founding a chamber orchestra is a little different than conducting the Boston Symphony, if at all. Yes, you know, uh, I actually love very much uh, talking about my, my chamber orchestra. We created together with my husband mm -hmm. while uh, we were both studying in conservatory. So the orchestra mostly consisted of um, our friends. Mm -hmm. And there, so some of them are still very, very our close, close friends. And uh, actually we managed to um, gather a very talented ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we certainly enjoyed it very much. And actually, that was a, at the beginning, it was a completely volunteer, 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 volunteer project. So uh, there were no other reason besides making music together. Right. Yeah, and that was great. That was lovely time, mm -hmm. lovely time. Uh, now, of course, it's different yes. because uh, this is professional orchestra and the grown-up people and. Uh, but on the other side, uh, this is, I think, one of the most friendly orchestras I have ever <laughs> met before. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think that uh, I will feel myself any kind of uncomfortable. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite something to have that many pairs of eyes staring at you, isn't it? I remember my conducting <laughs> class in oh, really? school. <laughs> Uh, it's us. a lot of eyes. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the music. Mm -hmm. um, did you play a role in selecting what was going to be performed on this concert? Uh, yes, as uh, you maybe know, we uh, composed this program together with uh, Tony Fogg. And uh, he suggest, uh, suggested the uh, Piano Concerto, Ravel, mm -hmm. with Jean-Yves, what is an absolutely <laughs> dream for me. And uh, uh, the second piece that I wanted to pick up was the Elgar's Enigma Variation. And then we uh, had to find a good uh, starting piece, mm -hmm. uh, opening piece, uh, that preferably would be a contemporary one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was looking for quite a long time, and didn't manage to, to find anything exactly what I wanted. Then Tony uh, proposed the piece by Elena Langer, mm -hmm. Figure Gets Divorce. And I was so much surprised because it was exactly what, <laughs> what I needed mm -hmm. and what the program needed to, uh, for, for, to combine um, another two pieces. So yeah, I think the, this piece fulfilled uh, everything that I 
wanted to, to have in the contemporary piece. Great. So the Eleanor Longer piece, Figaro Gets a Divorce, is a suite that she composed after writing a full opera. And that opera is kind of a combination of two versions of the story um, that starts with Rossini's Barber of Seville, goes through Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro, and this is sort of the <laughs> third. I mean, and between us, I'm actually surprised that Figaro ever got married, but nevertheless, <laughs> here he is about to get a divorce. Uh -huh. um, this piece is going to be brand new to, I think, many people in our audience. What can you tell us about what to listen for? Oh, well, uh, yes, we, m we meet their uh, all very well-known characters, uh, like Susanna or Cherubino mm -hmm. or um, Figaro and so on, but some new mm -hmm. per personalities. And music help us to recognize what's, what's going on. And actually we will, s we will see there are a lot of uh, kind of landscape pictures, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, love scenes, mm. yeah. Uh, some intrigues, mm -hmm. as usual. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> as usual, and uh, even one escape. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so this is a, a very um, extraordinary story and uh, that is uh, told in a brilliant musical language. Mm -hmm. So I'm absolutely sure that the audience will enjoy it very much. Excellent. We can't wait to hear it. <laughs> so the second piece that you already mentioned just a little bit about on the program is the Ravel Piano Concerto in G, which has two hands worth of playing, as opposed to his other concerto, which is only for the left hand. And you mentioned we have Jean-Yves Thibaudet back. Yeah, He's exactly. a Tanglewood regular, and we love having him here to play. Um, when I listened to that piece as I was getting ready to have this conversation with you, I realized that it's a little bit like the Kentucky Derby start. It starts not with an extended orchestral introduction <laughs> before the soloist then, you know, deigns to join three mm. minutes later. We have piano soloist right at the beginning with a solo yeah. piccolo player. Piccolo, yeah. And then in less than a minute, we have a solo trumpeter. So like solo, solo, solo out of the gate. How does that work for you? Well, uh, you know, uh, with this kind of uh, orchestra, it, it will be fine, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> but it is, uh, can be a little bit stressful for musicians to, to come in so quickly. Right. Yeah, and especially when the pianists uh, prefer the fast tempo, uh, which they normally prefer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but uh, on the other side, uh, everything that makes um, music special and unique uh, is great. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of beginning is absolutely mind-blowing. And who said that the, the concerto should start well, exactly. exactly with something that we already expect? Sure. So, yeah, this, I think, what makes the music special, unique. Mm -hmm. It's true. And for those who might be worried that you can't keep up right at the beginning, about a minute and a half in, we have a beautiful, slow, melodic theme that comes. So um, I guess that's one other feature of this particular concerto. And that is that the music changes dramatically, really quickly, even yeah. faster than Beethoven. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a lot there to coordinate. Um, mm -hmm. and also a lot of possibility for a really engaging experience for the, or for the orchestra, sure, yeah. and the soloist, but also the audience. Mm -hmm. um, what else should we know or think about the Ravel Concerto from your perspective? Well, I think when we have such a brilliant soloist, just Caesar and Lex, and just, I'm only a little bit worried that I will uh, stop conducting <laughs> on the <laughs> stage and just enjoying his amazing, beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. But hopefully I will, I will do my best to, oh. to, uh, to serve uh, as a conductor to, to this concerto. Yep, yeah, I have absolute faith in you. I'm not worried at all. You might be worried, <laughs> but I'm not worried. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, and then the final piece on the program, uh, the Enigma Variations, so-called by uh, Sir Edward Elgar. You know, a lot of classical music and popular music and jazz music too, a lot of Western music um, has as its basic formal structure, you know, the first thing we hear, then we hear something different after that, and then we go back to what we heard the first time. That's both on a like 
20 minute level and sometimes on a 30 second level, the way mm -hmm. the musical structure works. But variations on a theme are different than that. We have a theme and then the composer continually reinvents music using that theme in some way or another. And so that's the form we have with the Enigma variations. Um, I'm wondering how you as a conductor tie things together and keep the sense of a whole work in, in this particular style. Yeah, the, that's a, a good question. Uh, but I think when the piece is uh, as well written as this one, it's not a mm, too hard task to mm -hmm. do because um, it's in fact that air operation is connected and they are not only connected with the theme, but with each other. Mm -hmm. And by tempos, by tonality, by some rhythmical structures. And it makes um, my task to um, combine them much easier, mm -hmm. if, if you know how, how they match uh, one, one another. So I think, yeah, and beside this, uh, we certainly have pictures and characters mm -hmm. that should present in the music that uh, you, you, you have to feel or see them when, mm -hmm. when you work, work on it. So it's just not an empty uh, titles mm -hmm. <laughs> of each variation, but th this is uh, something beyond the, the music. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think this is another thing that we have to perform to, to make audience, um, to involve, uh, to introduce what Elgar put on each variation right. to, to audience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, th this is another thing uh, in comparing with symphony works that, that we have in Elgar's Enigma. But it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, any particular movements that we should think about or listen to with um, your advice? Well, as you know, the, the highlight of the Enigma is Nimrod yes. uh, variation. Yeah, but everyone knows it. You, you mm -hmm. will not miss it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I would just, just maybe uh, the, the final movement where Elgar, like, represent himself, mm -hmm. <laughs> himself and when some, some motifs and some rhythmical um, patterns from previous variations uh, return mm -hmm. in the final and how they work together and how they br bring the final epiphys of the theme, that is something to, to focus on. Okay, great, yeah. we'll listen for that. Mm -hmm. um, one final question. Yep. Um, I was a clarinet player, and so I know what the notes that I used to write in my music. You know, okay. go faster here, definitely look at the conductor <laughs> here, you know, all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But I was never a conductor, despite me talking about conducting class, not a conductor at all. Um, and I'm wondering, could you just give us a few general things about how you mark a score to oh. conduct? <laughs> Like, what clues do you put in there? Ah, okay. Uh, so uh, there are several, uh, like, uh, levels yes. <laughs> of, sure. of, of working with, with painting the scores. Yeah. <laughs> I usually uh, take a very basic one. Uh, I have red and blue pencil and mark the structures mm -hmm. and uh, mm, uh, the, the phrases and mark um, who plays and how plays. Yes. Yeah, so this, just to make it visible in the score. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I know that there are many uh, different ways to, to work with the score. My husband, for example, loves putting a lot of colors with, mar mm, with markings, uh, different voices with different color, and okay. also some pictures, some <laughs> smiles or opposite <laughs> <laughs> characters already in the score inside it. Yes. Yeah, this, this, this I think helps to, to, to be a little bit closer to, to the material. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me today What's to talk better? a little bit about your concert. We're really, really looking forward to it and we can't wait for that and to see you with us again. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. <laughs>